Welcome back on the gravel. Monday, April 15th, U.S. Tax Day, if you live in the United States. I already did my taxes. They'll be done when this is finished. Hopefully. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> that's an issue. That's but Where's the IRS <laughs> is coming for me? That's another issue on our hands, but... Good, good off boy. week this week, though. Good, good lots off of week. Stuff, lots of, of stuff. Lots of stuff. A lot about. of news. A lot of news <laughs> around the sport, too, so that's always nice to see, but... Starting off, Total Wolf told the media after Japan that the W15 has, quote, 70 points of downforce that are not seen on the track, while also explaining that the high temperatures of the track were inducing more wear and destroyed the team's chances last week. So where's the downforce? Yeah. Where are the 70 points of downforce that you are lacking? Because I don't know. It was so funny because also, like, during the race week, um, like, Martin, I'm pretty sure it was Martin Brundle said something about... One, that Japan was supposed to be a lot cooler, and it suited the Mercedes a lot more. Like, there was something about cooler temperatures that suited the Mercedes a lot better. So, I actually expected, like, a good showing from them last week, and then they were nowhere again. So, I don't really know. Like, this 70 points of downforce comment has absolutely no value to me, because I don't feel myself seeing it at any point. Yeah, I mean, especially, like, they were one of the only constructors that could build a car that overtook on a rouge a few years ago yeah dude so so like why where are these points of downforce i understand that there's different setups that you can take to alter the car and everything matters for it but like yeah if you have the chance to get those 70 points would you not want to like i just i find that really really stupid personally but I mean, the, the the temperature could have knocked it as well. That's true. The, like you can you can air pressure lose, and stuff. I was gonna say you yeah. can literally lose downforce because of temperature, because of air pressure, like all that kind of stuff. It shows that this sport is more science than, than you really just, uh, than you really think. Than what meets the eye. Yeah. Uh, what else we got during last week's race? Albon destroyed yet another Williams chassis, but that one was sent back to the factory to be repaired, and the team says that it will be done in time for the Chinese Grand Prix. Yeah, expect two cars, but um, if we have another Logan Sargent, Australia sitting out drama, don't be surprised. You get this one. Kimi Antonelli is apparently giving even more track practice in the W12. First one at Austria in the middle of next week. Toto said we want him to have the opportunity to drive a fast car with lots of aerodynamic downforce, which can help him in the early stages. This kid's 17 years old. He's got to get some practice in there. Does he um, really, though, if he's 17 and... Has enough super point license. Dude, We're going to talk about all this stuff, but like has enough super point license. He he, he falls into every category of the FIA. It's just license. not old. But hey, the Mercedes thinks that this guy is the next Max Verstappen. He's the, Merce- the Mercedes version of Max Verstappen. So Which could happen. We'll see. But yeah, it seems, um, seems like he's becoming more and more of a consideration for that Lewis Hamilton replacement just because of all the track time that he's getting. This first test, he's going to be... Um, in the 2021, the W12, and then that's to get him comfortable. They'll put him in the W13 after that, their 2022 car. He obviously can't test in uh, in last year's or this year's car. But they announced like, that. Oh, continue, no, sorry. Continue. No, you're good. Oh, I was going to say, they just announced that there's another test happening at the end of the month in two weeks yeah. at Imola. So he's getting not only some, like, I can't say, I mean, where, yeah, he's going to Austria for this week. So he's yeah. getting some like actual track practice that's, you know, really reputable tracks, really tracks that you're going to be racing on for a while. So being able to drive these newer modeled cars, newer regulation downforce cars, mm-hmm. just to get a feel is really going to help him hopefully make that gap in yeah. the next, you know, three, four months. So I was going to say, so. When Raven brought up the whole super license thing, um, he falls into every category of, you know, being uh, able to get a super license, except the fact that he's not 18 years old. He's way over the 40 required super license points that he that he needs. That's like the the big um, requirement of a super license for those who like don't really know what it is. 
Um, you need 40 super license points, which you get from racing in other categories that feed into Formula One um, for three years. The super license you, uh, points you accumulate from these categories will be lost after three years. So Kimi currently has 67 out of the 40 required super license points. Um, he got 12 for winning F4 Italian, uh, 12 for winning F4 ADAC, which is German F4, then 25 for winning uh, Formula Regional European, and then 18 for winning Formula Regional Middle East. So he's won a lot of championships in the past couple of years. There's no, you know, lack of um, knowledge as to why he's being considered for a Mercedes seat. I mean, he's won four titles in the past three years. Um, but, I mean, he's a qualified driver, so getting him behind the wheel a lot, I'm not too surprised about. Yeah, but. I mean, he's, from what I've gathered, him and Behrman are, like, the two guys that everyone's looking at to come into the sport next. Yeah. And, A, they both drive for Prima, which we'll talk about later. And, two, you know, we all saw Oliver's first, not you, uh, <laughs> Oliver's I debut. I wish it was me. Uh, in the Ferrari scoring points and solidifying him as a good contender for either a Haas seat next year or maybe a reserve driver. Again, oh, he's he a hot prospect, but I fans mean, love him too. Oh yeah, he's just a fan favorite from what it seems. He's the one of the first drivers to have a song, <laughs> like an actual song. Oh wait, 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 what? I didn't hear about this. I never heard, <laughs> I've never never heard, heard that. Okay, I'll show you that yeah, afterwards. Show me, but show me when we're done today. I mean, you have the like Max do do song, but like that one. Okay, but that one's been out for so many years. Yeah. So, like, I don't... This one seems like it's an actual just, like, fan-made Well, Max song. Verstappen is a fan-made song, and it just blew up. Yeah, but that one's catchy. This one's, like, funny. Okay. So, different different vibes. But yeah. Not exactly some F1 news, but something I saw on Instagram. So, PSG versus Barca was earlier this week, and, you know, you got a legend for both teams, Ronaldinho there. He's sitting in the Love crowd. Him, Great player. Should have won a Ballon d'Or, but this is not a that's, soccer that's, podcast. Yeah, it's neither here nor there. But so I'm just like, oh, wow, he's just, you know, sitting. They take a nice picture of him. And I'm like, who the hell is in front of him? And it's just Pierre Gasly, just <laughs> just just sitting there smiling. And, and you'll never guess Pierre Gasly liked the post. <laughs> no, no one was talking about it. No one was talking oh, about yeah. that he was in the post. It was just like. Ronaldinho at the game celebrating, and then every comment was like, "Yeah, but Pierre Gasly's there, right? Too like, yeah, because like it's where like, it's like Pierre's like peeping his head up into the photo too. Well, no, I mean, it's just like if <laughs> fuck, I'm screwing it. It's like this, like Ronaldinho is like here, and then it's just Pierre Gasly and here. So <laughs> it makes it hard. Sorry, that was terrible for the no, actual audio listeners, but I just got up behind Oliver and was standing behind him, so. Go check that out on the YouTube if you want a little <laughs> quick laugh. Yeah, we goof around out here. Uh, it's it's early. It's been a long weekend too, so you know we're doing That's our okay. best. We're doing our best. Andretti, we got some big Andretti news, which they're not joining F one yet, but but they're they're, they're making taking some steps. statements. They're making some statements. They're taking baby steps, baby, but not statements of words. Statements through action. Um, they've continued to progress their their F1 factory at Silverstone. Obviously, they don't have a team yet, but you know they're really building to uh, what's the word promote and make themselves look attractive to the sport. Um, but they announced that they're planning on creating F2 and F3 teams to feed this eventual F1 team, which I really like the sound of. It's a great idea, just as a business thing too. I mean. That adds three more seats to F3. That adds two more seats to F2. Um, they're also going to be bringing the Andretti Formula E team from the headquarters in uh, Banbury. And they'll occupy an adjacent building to the new headquarters to help add a sports car program as well. There's a lot of development that's going into this. I was going to say, Andretti actually got to go see the actual like factory portion that's done. Mm -hmm. And he was so ex like so excited just for... Mm -hmm. Everything to be in one centralized location and overall just not having to like worry about this issue anymore. Like now you guys have the space. I was say, now it's you all guys centralized, can work, which so is really important. 
And like you're saying, you got the F3, F2, Formula E, Formula One team in the future, all going to be working. And he was quoted saying that our goal is to have uh, F3 and F2 team to help support the F1 team and then maybe even a WEC car and WEC team. So they are definitely trying to take the steps to just diversify themselves in more and more racing. And that's what, well, that's just how like I go back to this question of like how are they not attractive to to F one? Th- and it seems and it seems more or less to me that they're not attractive to F one teams, current F one teams. Um, I didn't. I I think the teams themselves have been more opposed to Andretti than F one actually has. I guess that's just that's just my opinion looking at it from the outside. But I mean, I feel like if they keep working on this. It'll it, eventually build their resume I was just saying, for like, taking that. This is essentially a spot. crowbar, like about to pry yourself into the sport where you're like, we're doing everything you're asking us to. We're doing literally everything that other teams are doing. Why can't we get in? And I don't know. Uh, one thing they also said with Andretti was that um, they want to make that area for a uh, central for European racing. Yeah. But he also noted that promoting American talent is the main aim for the twin junior categories. Um, But they don't just specifically want to go after Americans. They just want to give them a better shot. Uh, I think they he quoted exactly saying that it's not just for American drivers, but it's a good ladder for Americans. They're still going to be looking for the best talent in the world. It's just going to give Americans a drivers a fairer chance compared to going to like an Italian team, a German team. Etc. And it sucks because it's something you're always going to see in a European racing series is the slack that Americans get. I mean, like you see how much crap Logan Sargent got before he even made it into the sport. So, like, I'm not, I'm not really surprised about that. And you have, you have young juniors in, you know, like F2. You have Juan Manuel Correa and Jack Crawford. Like, I could see them. You know, if if they have like one really good season and win the championship for some reason. Um, if they were to go to F1, they'd get the same slack that Logan Sargent did, I feel like. And it's like these these drivers are very accomplished. I mean, you had Logan Sargent, who should have won the F3 championship in 2020. He got taken out in the final race. So that's when Oscar Piastri swooped in and took that title on the last race when he couldn't even fight back. Um, it sucks. Like these these drivers do very well in their junior careers, and they get put to the side or, you know, bad talk literally just because they're american and i mean you can go back to like or go to any comment section on a youtube video or instagram Instagram. like people will talk slack on you know the tracks in america they'll talk slack on american fans calling them all dts fans and all that kind of stuff and it it sucks for the people and the talent um racing wise you know put all that effort in just to be constantly like Bombarded, bombarded with negati- negativity, you know. I and mean, that's what Lewis Hamilton when he like that's what happened to Lewis Hamilton when he got into the sport. Like he got a lot of slack because he was African American, um, which sucks. Like there's there's always going to be those people. Um, I mean, there's people. which really sucks. Yeah, there's those people around the world. So it's just how society is, you know. It sucks, yeah. but we do what we can to be better. I like each that. day at a time, you know. Little little side question that I had. Um, while writing our doc was why is Silverstone like the racing spot in Britain and holy rabbit hole. <laughs> I was going to say we were, we were sitting there last night doing all of our, doing all of our prep work and it's, it's actually we kind of sat shocking. here for like 15 minutes on this point. So the main one is like the this racing was my heritage. Theory. That was my theory. Racing heritage was my theory. And, uh, it has hosted the British Grand Prix since 1948 and the British stint of MotoGP since, I believe, 1960, but don't quote me on that. Um, so there's obviously a long, tenured relationship with that area. You also have that area for the teams being nicknamed Motorsports Valley. Which, which I think I, is really cool. I didn't, I didn't know that. So I, I think, didn't know that either. I think that's really cool just that, you know, we got, we got Silicon Valley in America. They got Motorsports Valley. Which sounds way cool. And I'm taking Motorsports Valley over Silicon oh Valley God, any yeah. day of the week. But apparently after World War II, engineers who built fast, lightweight aircrafts that were easy to repair also had the necessary skills to create motorsport products. 
And Silverstone also happened to be an old Royal American Air Force base, which allows them to have space for a track. So they had everything checked off already in like the 50s and just were like, yeah, let's do it. For me also, there's something that's so cool about like Air Force runways or just old airports being repurposed into into tracks like you have um obviously the top Solar gear Stone. track you have <laughs> no it was a repurposed airport <laughs> yeah and what was it like poland um i don't think it was poland but it was maybe it was like yugoslavia wait that doesn't even exist anymore <laughs> um hey, but yo, anyways why are we getting political <laughs> anyways like you have you have silverstone you've got like one of my favorites is laguna not laguna um but sebring in Florida, that's that's on an old um, airport runway, is and then you have America like America on an airport runway. I don't think so. Um, IndyCar wise as well, St. Pete, the opening race of the season, part of it takes place on an uh, airport runway. There's just, I don't know why. There's just something so cool um, about that concept to me. I, I guess it's just because like very few people get to drive actually on it. Yeah, you know, so like that idea of just being able to drive on a old tarmac sounds it's so yeah there's so much because, space like, obviously the concrete's different that's what people don't realize is like yeah it's has to be rougher silverstone wise though it's actually not like none of it's well, they, actually on the runway oh well, yeah they probably, that's all been like repaid i was gonna say they probably saint pete everything. though saint pete and like sebring you are on the runway like you're on the tarmac so that's wild there's a lot of variation in that but we yeah we went down that rabbit hole last night it was actually very fun to go down and just riff about this kind of stuff but back to what we were talking about earlier we did made we made a little slight mention of uh, of prima but the italian racing company continues to debut in different types of racing after debuting in le mans last year in the lmp2 category if you remember but they announced that they're going to be trying to run an indie car team which that kind of blew my mind which might be one of my favorite points this week but um Raven and I were having this conversation of, you know, more more teams leads to the chance of more competitions. Um, and then what I was thinking about in this, because a lot of people will say, oh, X team joins, they're going to be trash. And, you know, they'll sit at the back of the grid or whatever um, till they figure it out. Like, I mean, that's like what people um, are like hating on with Andretti. Yeah. For, for, for example. But you have to think about it in the sense like, this is how I feel with Prima. This is how I would feel with Andretti. Regardless of where you start in the sport, you will always have somebody relative to you. Whether you are you come in and immediately fight at the front, you fight in the midfield, or you're a back marker, you, you, are going to have, you, are, yeah, you are going to have a rival immediately. Unless you're like 2021 Haas, where you are a um, second and a half a lap slower um, than any other car because you fully sacrificed your season. No, you didn't see the 2021 Haas. That was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Um, But yeah, there's they're going to be competitive with some team immediately. Competition is a very objective word, I guess, in the sense that competition doesn't just mean oh fighting at the front. Competition is just, to me at least, you are competitive if you can fight with other teams. That like that's that's what I I I think competition is in racing. That's where I kind of have the more teams leads to the chance of competition just because you're throwing in two more drivers. I don't know. Is it two drivers? Uh, in Indy or typically, one? Yeah, yeah. Indy car teams, they're typically two drivers. Okay. So you're throwing in two more drivers. You're throwing in two more cars to 26 already. Yeah, it'll be r- close to 30. I was gonna say, we're getting close to 30 with that, which is exciting, but it is going to just make it overall more difficult and more challenging for points, which do, if you're IndyCar now, do you have to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, now we have, you know, 10 more teams than we used to say like 20 years ago. And the points are kind of getting skewed. I don't know how many drivers didn't have points last year. But yeah. like, is well, that no, IndyCar issue? IndyCar point system is I, really good. No, no, no. It's not that it's good. I actually might, it might be one of my least favorite point systems in all of motor racing. I think it is the, the most confusing thing I've ever looked at in my entire life. I still have no <laughs> idea how it works. Like literally, because you'll have like the winning driver in the championship have like seven hundred points. There's a special point scale specifically for the Indy five hundred. 
um, like where it, like it gets down to you literally get a point for leading a lap in the Indy 500. You get a point for where you qualify top 12. Like there's so many different um, like random. minuscule random points that get given throughout the season. And it's like it's like 75 points for a win or something. Like I, I can't explain it. Going off on a tangent. I hate it. <laughs> um, I think it needs to be refined. But yeah, no, don't worry about people not getting points. All right, I'm not going to worry about people not getting points because Oliver told me to. So I'm going to pray that every team wins. Um, yeah, I mean, All right. that's kind of it for the IndyCar section. We'll throw it back over to some F1 news that kind of came out Most later in the week. Most people's favorite news of the week. Oh, absolutely. Mine included. But Alonzo signs with Aston Martin through the 2026 season. He seems to be getting around 15 million a year from the team. I had a dig for that number, Oliver. I had a dig for that number. Or did you even find it? Uh <laughs> obscure article on the Guardian. Okay. So don't don't trust it 100%, but you know, it's a number that I saw and it seems reasonable to compared to what he was making in the last 6 years cuz it seems like 6 years ago in 20 Yeah. He was making almost thirty, and then now he's. But I mean, he, down, he's in the. He's, he's also older. Yeah, he's, but he's also has so many sponsors. He has his own carding company. He has. I mean, his resume from last year, as well. Like literally, I feel like that's a, a fair point. I saw the comparison between the two of them since he started, mm-hmm. and oh my god, I forgot how bad Lance Stroll is. I, I eleven know exactly podiums. What you're talking about. I think it was eleven it, uh, versus eight, two. You know, he's had two DNFs. Lance Stroll has had 11. Oh, and that's then, what it and is. And then Fernando's had eight podiums. Lance has like a best finish of P4. Yeah. It's it's rough. So he, he gets signed through 2026. That also allows him to use the Honda power supply units. And apparently that a lot Play of people are saying... Too. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that the Honda power supply units are a big factor in keeping him there. Which is so funny because I feel like the most tumultuous period of his career was at McLaren in the the mid-2010s with the Honda Power Units, bro. Like, 2015 McLaren, awful. Really cool livery, black livery with a, like, red uh, McLaren symbol on that thing, but my goodness, was that car awful. Sorry, my roommates are looking for apartments and giving me uh, updates. All good. The one that I just got was looks like a dungeon and four dollars for dry <laughs> washing and drying. So I don't wait. Think that's we'll, a ripoff. I've never so seen washing and drying that expensive. I don't think we will be living there, but that's okay. Um, the one thing for me that was the most interesting about this whole Alonzo resign with Aston Martin, which I actually didn't expect. I'm gonna be completely honest. I thought he was gonna leave Aston Martin, not retire, but just go somewhere else. Go to a Red Bull or Mercedes. A Red Bull or Mercedes. But, but that's where he said with Mercedes. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're quick, good. But like. He was like, why would I want to take a step back? Yeah, that's true. And the, the But the thing for me was like the term lifetime contract being thrown mm. around a lot. Um, and it was something he himself was quoted saying. And to me, that feels like post... That, it almost feels like he's confirming that he'll retire at Aston Martin whenever this contract ends. Because I don't actually know the exact time um, on the contract ending. I just know it's multi-year, meaning he will be in 2026. But... Let's say that lifetime um, tag means he'll have some job in the factory or in the team advisory role, something like that, after he retires. That's what I'm thinking when they're saying lifetime contract. Like, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. I think, well, that's where it kind of gets weird because, I mean, I'm not going to make a crappy joke because I respect these drivers, but, Mm -hmm. like... Lifetime contract in the sense of your racing lifetime is kind of how I gather it. It's kind of like... No, no, no. This is not a Lance Stroll contract. No, it's not a Lance <laughs> That's Your dad's the owner of the team. That's a way different situation. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like Alonzo, A, trusts Lawrence and what the team's doing. B, doesn't want to go to Mercedes because the car is a step back. Doesn't yeah. want to go to Red Bull because he has to compete with Max in the same machine. So I guess in theory, it does make the most sense for him to stay at AMR. And now everyone's going to argue, well, who's his teammate? And because obviously Lawrence, Lance Stroll isn't going to be helping. 
yeah. <laughs> do you win the constructors cup or anything and i feel so, like eventually we we will have the the point where lance does make the decision personally to, to go leave. play tennis yeah no yeah. or or drive in whack like i think he would be a good dr- like whack driver i like, agree I, I definitely think he has the i don't want to say like response time <laughs> cuz <laughs> obviously he doesn't but yeah. I feel like he has just the overall skill set that Weck kind of requires where it's you're taking less chances because you're driving for such a long time. So, yeah, I also don't want Lance Stroll to be Fernando Alonso's last teammate in the sport. Like, I'd love to have him have another interesting <laughs> I saw teammate people, battle. I saw people saying that Seb comes back and that's his teammate, which could be insane. Which could Wait, be that insane. would be shocking. That would also be awesome. It would be awesome, but it would be crazy for the sport to kind of comprehend that we hey, have like, two rookies. Yeah, if rookie Seb and like second year Alonzo, bro. These guys are going to go crazy. Oh my God, we've seen this before. But Mercedes is now in a position where they have to either get signs or well, I yeah, threw this out where... There was a rumor ooh. that they offered signs a one plus one year contract. Um, but Carlos wants a two year contract until already. No, 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 no. Mercedes would keep him there for next season. And then he would either stay or leave in 2026 Uh up to the discretion of Mercedes or what Steins wanted was a two year contract with the, with the option for an additional third year, which now makes me question, this is all rumor, by the way, so don't take anything I'm saying um, without a grain of salt, but does that mean he believes in Mercedes and doesn't, like, because I'm thinking he goes to Audi in 2026, but with that kind of deal that he's looking for with Mercedes, if that is true. Does he trust the Mercedes? Does he trust the Mercedes project? But I, I literally Do saw this Do like you trust yesterday. the Mercedes project? Absolutely not. There we go. I think, I mean, that's, I'm... I think it's a coin flip. Every new set of regulations is a coin flip. That is actually a very good point. I think that idea of just, like, you change the regulations... Because here's the thing, I trusted, gonna get, I trusted the Aston Martin project. I trusted... And okay, it, I didn't but it hasn't the failed. Project. It hasn't failed yet. It hasn't succeeded, but it hasn't failed. So, that's where I'm going to kind of argue with it. But I agree with you that Mercedes definitely needs to change and hopefully the regs the next reg change will yeah. allow that change to happen but what if they go for danny rick that's not happening bro do not put that in any person's mind bro that is not happening let's just put it out there in the universe and see what happens danny rick's okay. career is going to bed after the abu dhabi GP liam lawson this year. or after like miami liam lawson watching his back it's mm-hmm. literally all right. Next thing, we got next year's schedule being announced. That was exciting. We got a lot of changes that kind of happened. The exact but same 24 races to, next, to this year. Um, a little bit of a reshuffle. I believe... I, d- I don't know. Is Madrid in the, the Madrid no, streets? No, 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 Not no, yet? 2026? No, no. Yeah. It's the exact same 24 tracks as this year. Just a slight reshuffle of the first five. Yeah, so we got first five have a shuffle, like Oliver said. Australia is going to be the opening race in the middle of March. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia will be held in the middle of April due to Ramadan and will respectfully be rounds number four and five. China will be held as at uh, as the second race at the end of the season. At Jesus Christ. At the, at the end, end of, of March, March. And Japan will be the third race, the first of April. Which um, means we get cherry blossoms, so we can go. Also, <laughs> Let's also go. if you actually look at the at the schedule, the first six weeks there's five races. Mm-hmm. It's a double header, one week off, and a triple header. So it's gonna be exciting. I kind of feel bad for the drivers, but the season is also you know this season started first week of March. The next one starts you know midway two, through. The, I was gonna say two weeks later is the but very the season next goes point. longer, so it actually no, goes into it, December. The, well, the season in theory, yes. But yeah, no, no, since no. you're starting two weeks later, mm-hmm. they are actually only going one day longer. Their season is only one day longer compared really? to this one. Be- yeah, just because of I fact checked the amount of He's uh, actually right. Like they do go into December, but it's very, very, very like barely first. I think they actually days. end on the same day. Yeah, I think it's maybe one day apart. But yeah, uh, where where was I? Oh yes, this uh. 
this later season will be blah blah blah. So but also, also mean, goodbye to the Saturday yeah, night races. Only Saturday night race is going to be Vegas at the end of the year. Now, which, obviously, Japan and China and Australia will for, still be for us American folk in the middle of the night. So actually, the first three races of the year now will all be Saturday night for us, which will be um, very cool. I'm excited. I, for I that. love. I love. Saturday night, Saturday night races. I'm all for getting up at 6 a.m. for a Formula One race, but also there's something really cool about staying up till midnight. Say, having your races. entire day, going to work, being excited, coming home, having like, a drink, and then just watching the lights go out before bed. I was, I was going to say, literally just making a drink, grabbing a snack, and just like falling asleep to an F1 race. Okay, that's not, not a good way to put it because I don't love me some F1. We don't fall but, like, asleep. End off my day and relax yes, with an F1 race. That's a great race. way of putting it. Um, yeah, so that's going to be kind of difficult for us too, because, you know, we record on Sundays or Mondays, depending on typically Sundays, typically but Sundays, but with the Saturday night race, it was perfect because we could watch the race, go to bed, wake up early, come here, record. Bam. I mean, that's what we're doing for China next week. It's at 2 a.m. for us. We're going to watch that go to bed and then walk over here to the studio. We're recording, recording at night. Oh yeah, we are doing it at night. But it's not going to make a difference for you guys. You guys get the same content every day. Same time. The, every every, every Monday. So you can't, can't hate us. We're trying, you know. Uh, other major changes in the schedule include Spa and the Hungarian ring being flipped, with Hungary being the last race before the four-week summer break, which... I'm cool with that. I was going to say, we will probably take a four-week summer break as well and just relax if we have some cool guests we'll do a little special episode but i was gonna say i mean this season as well i feel like we'll do one pod one pod um during the summer break just because it, it's three off weeks yeah so one pod in the middle and then probably traveling for the rest of us but mm -hmm. um what's going on with alpine man what's happening because I'm yeah, we saw a lot of a things. Lot, we saw a lot of stuff getting thrown around this week. Like they were like, "We're gonna sell the team." Oh like I was seeing so many posts and and articles from so many different spots saying that Alpine was actively trying to sell the team. The quitter one was really funny, where it's just the Alpine with a white flag. And yeah, I was like ah, yeah, it seems but it was fitting. It was very interesting. Um, these have obviously these these have been denounced now by Alpine's team principal. Um, and just the team as a whole. But when we were looking at this, what was very interesting was they were trying to sell the team, but whoever was buying the team had to continue to use Renault engines until 2029 um, in the sense that, you know, Alpine was trying to protect their employees who have already started working on this new power unit, which I actually respect a lot, even if, you know, if this it's was true, I, I respect good, that a lot. It's good business move just to keep the idea of your employees. Like, I don't know. Now, I mean, I'm, who wants to use a Renault engine? <laughs> Nobody. But Except for Fernando Alonso when it was really, really good. I was getting hype. I was like, oh, my goodness. Andretti's going to buy Alpine. Um, all the <laughs> Alpine fans, I'm so sorry for all the pain you've been through. Pulls it's up like, the uh, Fernando hitting the f of the, oh, the V12. I got to bleep that. That's okay. It's, that's the that's first, first, time. first curse that's in like 20 episodes. That's our first like actual just slip up. So that's my bad, folks. No, that's okay. Meep. Um, but anyways, so... I was I was like I was sitting in bed I was like oh my goodness Andretti's gonna buy Alpine blah 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 and then I realized it's kind of like you've had one bad start to the season you're not selling the team after four races like I like when I really started thinking about it I was like there's no way this is true but the thing that's, they were they were middle of the pack last year I feel like people forget that their car was they, <laughs> like they, they when were I say like, middle of the pack quite literally middle of the pack. They, yeah, yeah, they weren't. The, they weren't part of the back markers. They were not part of the attacking field. They were fighting nobody last year. They had 150 points. Yeah, the next highest was like what 300 something. Yeah, and I was gonna say it was like there was 150 points separating them and the team ahead, and then 140 points separating them and the team behind. It, I mean, so they were fighting nobody. Um, that's not in a position to really sell the team. I don't feel like you know. Yeah, you're in a, you're in the middle of the pack. You did fine. You got decent money. You got an idea of where the car's regulations should be going. Yeah. Did you capitalize on it? No. Do you need to sell the team because of that? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. You still have, what, five more years with Renault? Like, yeah. work it out. Here's my thing, though. Racing Point India comes back. Oh, no. 
But I was going to say, like, when it comes to us talking about rumors <laughs> here and stuff, um, they always have a way of, like, hinting at what's going on behind and, like, some level of development on some issue. So, at, like, you know, they're not trying to sell the team, but... Do you think that's being tossed around I in feel like higher-ups? Yeah, I feel like... There's discussions. Discussions and scenarios being posed with higher-ups. Um, so, it's not true, but there's probably some... Level of, of truthness to yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it also could be strange for the fans just to have another rebranding happen because, you know. This is classic Reno, dude. Sell the team, buy it back 10 years later. So I uh, did a little chart just to kind of give us a situation with Alonzo announcing his contract. So. Where where what's the driver's situation for next year look like as of now? So Ferrari is one of the three teams with their two drivers set as of now with Leclerc and Leclerc, <laughs> Leclerc and Hamilton. Uh, if you haven't seen that little it's kid. this little kid at um at Jetta, oh my and he, they're doing the little driver parade, and he's got his phone out, and he's he's screaming, losing his voice, trying to get Charles Leclerc's attention. It's probably my favorite video of the it, year. It's really funny. Um, him and Hamilton are for the bright red. You have Alonso and Stroll for AMR. You have Red Bull with Max and undisclosed individual as of now. For Mercedes, you have Osama bin Russell as your first driver and another undisclosed driver. But they tried to get Max and were denied yeah, by not Max. Surprised. Which, brother, do you, did you really think you were going to snipe him? Nah. Nobody's sniping Max, bro. Uh, McLaren is the third team with Lando and Oscar. They are perfectly set for next year. Williams has Alex and his teammates spare car. The driver doesn't really matter because you know, true, they're going to lose gonna the car to Alex thing. anyway. And then you have Alpine, Haas, Steak, and V Carb all have open seats. So it's going to be. I can't wait for silly, silly season. season. Wait for that summer break. That's probably what our one podcast is going to be over summer break. Silly season news. It's, it'll literally be silly season news. So much stuff loves to happen over the summer break. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Leah Block, F1 Academy driver for Williams and daughter of Ken Block, started preparations to drive the FW08 this week, and I'm very jealous. That is all. That 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 was the only point I have for that. So um, I say FW08. That's the 2017 Mercedes. Or sorry, no. I was thinking of W8. I was thinking of W8. FW08. That's the Williams. Williams, brother. I think it's the. It's, a, it's an older car. I know that much. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's cool, though. Um, the last major talking point that we have um, is this. This was another, this was another prep, prep, prep day uh, prep tangent day just, we went off yeah, on. Yeah, I mean. But funny enough, okay, because it's actually, like, I'd love for, I want business. you to start talking about this because I was seeing ads Yeah, because you were getting it. I, I got them, too. Uh, so, apparently... I mean, we live in Chicago. That's some open information. That's where we are headquartered. That's where we operate. Um, and so there's this company called the 24 Hour of Lemons. This and is not us pronouncing Lemon wrong. No, it is, it is lemons, lemons. Like lemonade. Uh, the reason is because these cars are $500. That is the regulations for them. So yeah, 24 Hour of Lemons, it is a... A race open to the public in which you have, as long as your car has had $500 put into it, and that could be the price of the car itself. As long as it's a $500 car, it's a race that's open to the public. You can race. And so it has rally, it has iRacing and endurance racing. And it it's not just like one and done in Chicago in the Juliet Autobahn Country Club, I believe it's called. Yeah. They race at Road America. They race all across the West Coast. They race all across the East Coast. It's like, like a it's like a championship, dude. But it's in the sense of just getting, you know, normal people out there to drive. And mm -hmm. so Oliver and I have decided that we will be competing next year. Uh, we are taking applications for our third driver and our if crew you want members. a reserve driver, if you want a reserve drive for us, we were thinking about getting a go kart, maybe taking one of the go karts from like CJ Barrymore's. Let's get a Lando Norris put in a turbocharger. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Oh, brother. We're going to actually do what Group B tried to do and take 400 cc, or 1,000 cc motors from motorcycles and put one on each wheel of a, uh, okay, of a car. Dude. And oh, I thought you were going to say a go-kart. Of <laughs> a go-kart? Oh, God. Dude, that, that would be amazing. That would be insane. But this uh, 24 hours of lem- lemons um, also holds... Holds the world record for most participants in one race, which now I just have to see because, I mean, with five hundred, dude, five hundred dollars, you can put anything in there, dude. I said that we should get a uh, a Honda Fit or an old Prelude. Respect, dude. A Honda, an old Honda Fit would be so fun. I can't even lie. Just like a stick, like a stick stick Honda Fit. Yeah, no, no, like a stick Honda Fit for sure. Let's get the Prius manual. There's no way that's a real car. <laughs> no, but I feel like you can manual swap transmission. I feel like it's not that hard. But yeah, I don't know. That that was just something we saw and I think it's really really funny and I don't know. I also Or strap a jet engine onto some roller skates. Get a jet engine into like one of those like Fiat's. <laughs> no. Um the Yo, oh my goodness. Oh, Oliver's got a tangent. We <laughs> We get the flying car oh, from the from from Top Gear. Do you want to give them the context? Okay, no one's gonna realize what we mean. Okay, so we Raven and I will always binge watch um, like the new episode. Binge watch it's one episode, but like every time the new episode of Top Gear, the comes Grand out, Tour. Uh, sorry, yeah, the Grand Tour. We need to start watching Top Gear too, but we'll watch the new episode of the Grand Tour every single time it comes out. We'll you know we'll set a day, get some drinks, have dinner, and watch that together. Um, but the one we just recently watched was, was a road trip through Eastern Europe and I can't remember what country it is. It was one of the last ones. It might've been the Czech Republic. You can totally correct me if I'm wrong for anybody who's watching, who's seen this. Um, but they, you know, flying cars is always something like you dreamed of as a kid. Like watching, you have to give the context that, uh, Richard Hammond. James May. It was James May. James May was having a terrible time because his car just sucked. So the idea was that Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson were going to cheer him up with this unique display. And then he missed it. (laughs) Yeah. But anyways, like like I was saying was you have... um, Like as a kid, you always like fantasize about flying cars. Like my my like big obsession with that was like when I watched Back to the Future... Mm -hmm. Where they had the the one um, movie where they went into 2015 and you saw like those flying cars on the flying highways and I thought that stuff was so cool and like obviously when you grow up you'll realize that's not like realistic really but then impossible. but then we're watching the Grand Tour and they're in out the of Czech nowhere Republic, out of nowhere really cool looking car and all of a sudden a jet engine comes out of the back of it it just sprouts it sprouts arms out. And then it just takes off. Dude, it, was it was a it was literally a car that turned into well, an you, airplane. You pointed out that it's like, is that a propeller? Yeah, and I then, was going to say the the, tur- the wind turbine was actually really small. Yeah, so but I was like, like, there's no way this can work. But then it just, I think the one thing that really helped it was the spoiler, like the way the spoiler is shaped above the things gives it more lift. Yeah, but then I don't know. We also pointed out that the wheels were not like locked in place if that makes I was gonna sense say the, the wheels were tilt or like um spinning as spinning, well spinning free roaming or whatever it is but, I mean, but it's a car so i don't know it was really cool and we just want to talk about that real quick yeah but we went on the we went from 24 hours of lemons to flying cars in the czech republic welcome to our f1 podcast <laughs> <people>. <laughs> this is what off week off week racing happened like conversations are like you just you Dude, just Raven and I will just be chucking anything in there. I was going to say, we have to speculate. We got to fill the time somehow. But the last note that we want to kind of come across was just a thank you for our listeners. You know, the YouTube video did relatively well compared to the other ones. Want to shout out those 12 Dutch people that listen, 10 Canadians, 18 UK listeners. Shout out the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, shout out the YouTube algorithm for, you know, 10,000 impressions and two hours. That was really sick. But yeah, we just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts we wouldn't be here without you guys and you know we're still starting in this journey but we're getting there and we're learning we're learning i think it's a learning experience and you guys get to watch us 
mess around and figure everything out. Absolutely. So. And obviously, the longer we do this, the better we're going to get. Yeah. The more and more improvements we'll have. Once I'm graduated with school, I'm going to be doing a lot around here to make it A, just better on YouTube, B, we're going to make some graphics and stuff for the, the camera and stuff. And I'm going to start making YouTube shorts. He's going to make YouTube we're shorts. We're going to potentially get a green screen behind us or make a little set behind us. Too. Yeah, we're going to make this a lot more serious. And, you know, obviously it's not going to be our full-time jobs. We're going to be working other places. I'm going to be it's, doing I mean, it's other just, editing It's just like a hobby for me. I don't have to do it <laughs> if I don't want to. I can stop to. whenever I want. Uh, my dad except and my for we love that. Except for we can't. Kimmy's, we're all jealous of Kimmy's free will. Let's be real. Like, yeah, don't. don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what's the? I miss that man, dude. Bah. <laughs> bah. Oh, Kimmy. We'll you. soon have another Kimmy in F1. Just not finish. Dude, Kimmy Antonelli is going to speak more words in his first F1 race weekend than Kimmy did his entire career. Entire career. Absolutely. I think that's very, very true. But anything else you wanna you wanna say? Liverpool just blew the Premier League this this uh, this mm-hmm. morning. That's what I want to say. I was gonna say I'll run through our other sections. Oh, we have that a little bit have. of MotoGP news. We I do. Almost forgot about uh, that. It is going to be happening in a couple hours. In a couple now. hours from now, so we will talk about it uh, next not, week. Yeah, next week. Sadly, it's not going to be on the air. That's just kind of what happens with the scheduling and it being in America after being overseas for a long time. So. But, but we did have qualifying yesterday. True. Um, which I, I threw my little point on. We had um Maverick Vinales taking pole position with a time of two minutes point eight six four, uh, which was three tenths ahead of second placed Pedro Acosta. So it was a very convincing pole position time. And it seems it was, like it's gonna be a good race. I was gonna say the the split throughout the field, I think every every bike was within three seconds of each other. Um but, I mean, Maverick was the only driver in the two minutes, so it was pretty impressive. That's actually crazy. And I, I've never seen MotoGP race around Coda, so... It's exciting, because it's a I, harder track. I also really want to just see how they go into that first uphill corner. That's going to that's gonna be so cool. Yeah, that, that that's it for us, but we got China next week. We will have our MotoGP recap next week as well. well. MotoGP. Uh, we also have uh, Imola. Next week, 6 a.m. So, yes, <laughs> Oliver, we might not be sleeping next week. Well, well, given it's on the 24th, we might we might have two. Well, hours I'll be of watching sleep. it. I, yo, yeah, guys, I'm gonna be off an all nighter next episode. I'm gonna be. I'll, I'm so sorry if I fall asleep. We will be having lots of coffee. I was gonna say the F1 race will end it at 4, 4 a.m. And, and then, then two then, hours later, we got Imola. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting, but. I'm so hyped up. This is really good. Yeah. That'll be it for us this week. And uh, we will catch you guys next week on the gravel. On the gravel. Have a good one, everyone. Check out the Good Morning uh, Good Morning Hockey. I produce that three times a week with the Tassos. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Wherever Subscribe. You like Check out the other videos. Bye, everyone. Have a great week.